It's now time to start making the arms for Doug the Dog. We're going to start off with our slip knot as always. We will then chain four. It's one, two, three, four. Make an increase in the second chain from the hook. It's two single crochets in one stitch. In the next chain we make a single crochet on its own. In the last chain we make four single crochet increase, meaning four single crochets in the same spot. So that's one, two, three, and four. Then in the next one we just do a single and in our last stitch we make an increase. The last stitch is also the first stitch that we worked in for this round. And that brings us to the end of round one. For round two we're repeating a mini pattern of an increase followed by four single crochets and we're going to do that twice. So our first stitch gets an increase and then the next four stitches are going to get a single crochet each. That is one, two, three, and four. We then repeat that pattern by making an increase in the next stitch. That's our increase followed by four single crochets. That's one, two, three, and four in our final stitch. Which brings us to the end of round two. For round three we'll be making 12 single crochets, that is one in each stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. For round four we are repeating round three and making twelve single crochets again. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, which brings us to the end of round for round five we start by making two single crochets in the first two stitches, so that's one and two. We follow that by two decreases, so that's decrease number one and then decrease number two and we finish our round with six single crochets. That's one, two, three, four, five, and six, which brings us to the end of round five. For round six, seven and eight, we're going to make ten single crochets in each round, so it's just one in each stitch. So that's number two, three, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, which brings us to the end of round six. And we're going to repeat the exact same thing for round seven and eight, making 10 single crochets in each round. Before we carry on with round nine, it is time to stuff the arm. So we're just going to take some stuffing and we're going to push it down into the arm. Now, when we do this, we want to make sure that we are only stuffing the hand section. We do not want to stuff the entire arm. So you want to make sure that you don't put too much stuffing in because you don't want to fold the entire shape. You do want to compress the stuffing down into the hand though, so that the hand is very firmly stuffed, even though the arm is left empty. Now, you can see I put quite a bit of stuffing in there, but if you look at my hook and my arm, it goes in about that much without any stuffing being in the arm at all. So we've only stuffed this section where we've got the hand and we've left the arm section empty. We will now carry on with round nine. For round nine, we're going to make five decreases in a row to close up our arm. So stitch one and two gets our first decrease. Stitch three and four gets our second decrease. Stitch five and six gets our third decrease. Stitch seven and eight gets our fourth decrease. And then stitch nine and ten will get our fifth and final decrease. We're then going to finish off by making a slip stitch in the next stitch. We don't need to leave a long end because we're going to create movable limbs. So we're not going to be using this to sew onto the body. Instead, we're just going to pop it on our tapestry needle. We're going to weave in and out around that last round that we did so that we can pull it tight to close it. like that and down the middle coming out in a random opening lower down on the hand and just snip it off and that gives us our arm that we're going to be using you'll notice we've got a nice smooth curve on the outside of the arm and we've got a smaller curve with a bit of a bulb here on the inside. This side will go next to the body, this side will be the outside, and this section here is then your hand. Now you'll need two arms, so you need to repeat this part of the video a second time to create a second arm so that you've got two of them. Once you've completed both arms, you can move on to attaching the arms to the body. Next, we're going to be pinning the arms to Doug the dog. Now, what we want to do is we want our arm to be on the side of our body. We want it to actually be touching the head, so we want it to go into this neck area here. And we want it to line up nicely with our ear that we have already attached to the body. So, we pop our arm next to the side and we hold it in place with two pins.
you'll notice on the ivory side it's lining up with your little spot a bit you can see from the front we then take the other arm want to make sure that we've got it directly opposite the first arm also touching the head also lining up with the ear as we did with the first one Little. Okay. Now, you want to check before you are sewing, check from the front that the arms look even, they've got an even length, that they're both touching the head over there, that they're evenly spaced with the muzzle. You want to check from the side, you want to check from the other side, you can check from the back to make sure that they look nice and even. You can even check from the top but our ears get in the way so let's do it from the bottom. There we go. This arm seems to be a little bit further back than this arm so I'm just going to move this one a little bit forward. See, this is why we check from all directions to make sure that our arms actually are even and our muzzle actually is in the middle so that we can get a nice and even result on our work. Okay, now that we've attached the arms, it's going to be time to sew them on. To create movable arms we're going to be using our upholstery needle which is a lot longer than the width of our body and on it we've got some fishing line. It's difficult to see because it's see-through but you just place a length of fishing line on the needle. You're going to turn to the back of your toy. You're going to find a spot in the middle of the back to enter. doesn't matter exactly which one. You're going to push your needle towards your left hand side because you want it to come out in the arm even though you're entering through the body and you want to aim for the top section of the arm like we've done here so that your needle can go through. When you pull your fishing line through, do make sure that you leave a tail of fishing line hanging down the back. You're going to need that later if you are to complete the movable arms. Now, what we're going to do is you're going to go in the exact same hole that you came out of on the arm. But this time you're going to push your needle straight through the body and out the other side. So it can come out in a similar position on the second arm that you did on the first one. So straight through the body like that. Now if you're pulling your fishing line through you'll see that it actually disappears into the arm on this side because you've gone through the exact same hole. Now we're going to repeat this stitch a couple of times just to get some firmness. You want to make sure that your fishing line doesn't get caught around things. So you go in the exact same hole, you push all the way straight through the body, to come out the other arm. pull through and remember to leave your tail my fishing line got caught around my pin so I just pull my pin out and push it back in to free my fishing line so that I can pull it all the way through there go. going to repeat this large stitch one more time go in the same spot pushing the needle all the way through the body out the other end. Oh gosh, lost my fishing line. That sometimes happens. 
Fishing line does not like staying on needles. When that happens, just repeat your stitch. Of course, reattaching the fishing line to your needle first. There we go. Now, for me, that's enough repetition. So what I'm going to do now is I'm still going to go in the same hole on this side. But instead of pushing straight through the body, I am going to aim for that opening where we started, where we've got the little tail of fishing line hanging out. We want to come out that exact same hole for this to work. There we go. Now you should have both ends of a fishing line coming out of the same hole. What you're going to do is you're going to knot these two ends together. The first one, you want to pull very tight because the tightness that you create here is how firmly your arms will be held into place. So pull nice and tight on the first try. Then you're going to just tie it a few more times. That's the second one. And we go for the third one. Because you would want to make sure that this knot does not come loose. So you want to do it quite a few times to make sure that it's firmly, firmly tied off. Okay, once you're happy with your knot, you're going to snip off the ends of the fishing line short. And then you're just going to take out your pins. Your arms should now stay exactly in place and you'll find that they are able to move all the way forwards and all the way backwards. If you're happy with the movement, you just take the back of your needle and you push that knot that you made with the fishing line into the body so it's not sticking out and it's not feeling all scratchy. If you run your fingers over, you should not be able to feel it at all. And that is how you create movable arms for Doug the dog. There we go.